One of the key tenets of writing is to show, not tell. Audiences are more invested in stories when they get to personally see the characters, problems, and settings rather than hear about them secondhand. It's the difference between me telling you that Catra is a villain who has cat-like tendencies and you just watching a clip of her fighting in her unique animalistic style. You get the same info from both me and the show, but you're gonna be more invested and convinced by the show than just my words. Miraculous Ladybug has always been really bad at applying this principle. The show is filled with repeated and pointless exposition. Marinette has Tiki and now Alia, Adrian has Plog, and even Hawkmoth has Natalie, so everyone always has someone close to talk to about what they're feeling when a facial expression and music cue is all they need. Let me show you an example. Whoa, you mean you'll know who he is? You'll know his secret identity? You're right! I can't do that! If I know who Cat Noir is and Shadow Moth akumatizes me, he'll know how to find Cat Noir and he'll capture both the Miraculous! He'll merge them together and make his wish come true, and then the whole world will turn into whatever he wants! Finally! <laughs> See? You can't do that! This... This is just bad. Not only does she have to speak at 80 miles per hour just to get all this dialogue out in a timely fashion, but it's all stuff we've heard over and over and over again. Now, let me just cut this dialogue out and show you this clip again. Whoa, you mean you'll know who he is? You'll know his secret identity? Finally! <laughs> See? You can't do that. There. Now we get the same impression that this is a bad idea without wasting 20 seconds of our lives. I bring up this flaw of Miraculous now for a very specific reason. Miraculous has always been bad at show don't tell, but Kuroneko is an example of an episode that goes beyond that. In Kuroneko, not only do they tell you everything you are supposed to feel, but the things they show completely contradict those feelings. Let's start with the Cat Noir arc up until this point. In seasons 1 through 3, Cat Noir is Ladybug's primary partner. In every fight the audience sees, Ladybug and Cat Noir team up to take on the villain. Now, there were some complaints by the community that Cat Noir didn't seem as important, despite the show's premise specifying that they are two halves of a whole, but ultimately he was present and somewhat utilized in every conflict. Then, season 4 starts with Ladybug's new role as the Guardian. The Guardian role provides an interesting hiccup to the formula we've come to expect. Now, there isn't a separate person holding the other Miraculous. There isn't someone else who knows Cat Noir's identity. There isn't anyone who can hold Ladybug accountable. Okay, so Su Han is here, but he's pretty garbage at his job, so he doesn't really count. This new role gives Ladybug extra responsibility, and as famously said by many a dead person, with great responsibility comes great power. At least, I'm pretty sure that's what they said. Part of Ladybug's arc this season is growing into this new role, becoming someone more responsible. And like any character arc, she doesn't start off so strong. And it's this clumsy attempt at becoming a reliable guardian that causes Cat Noir's arc in this season. His arc? Learning Ladybug is a freaking hypocrite. Okay, okay, too harsh. His arc is really defining himself in a world where it isn't just the two of them anymore. I don't want to spend too much time recapping everything that happened in Season 4, so here are three key pieces that matter for this video. One, he learns that Ladybug doesn't need him for some battles and now is relying on other heroes instead. Two, Alia and Nino know each other's secret identities and Ladybug is okay with this. Three, someone else has been trusted with the Ladybug Miraculous. Also, remember that last season had friction due to Cat Noir never meeting Fu, so that frustration carries over as well. So after facing multiple examples of both Ladybug's lack of trust in him and his unexplained emotion from partner to peon, we reach Kuro Neko, an episode dedicated to Cat Noir's reaction to these feelings. The episode starts off with Ladybug saving the day with several other heroes without Cat Noir. And this is where our first problem with this scenario begins. I know, we're like 30 seconds in and there's already a problem. However, this particular problem really matters in context later, so we'll return to it. After Cat Noir confronts Ladybug later, Ladybug tells Cat Noir she doesn't have time for him and he'd be more helpful shutting up. 
So he tells her to come back for his miraculous and she doesn't even notice that that's what he said, too caught up in her list of responsibilities to register the words. And I actually don't mind this bit. It's nice framing to the conflict that shows how disconnected they've become. Ladybug just assumes Cat Noir has nothing serious to say and Cat Noir immediately shuts down and chooses the nuclear option. They've strayed so far from their original partnership that this single exchange is enough to tear them apart. And Ladybug's immediate reaction isn't awful either. She initially seems very distressed by his words when she realizes what he means, heading back immediately only to find out she's too late. There's an element of affection here, that she still does care for Cat Noir, at least to a point that his actions sadden her. But this is where the episode starts to go awry. In the next scene, the first words out of Ladybug's mouth are, but I didn't do anything, which sets up a key idea. Ladybug does not recognize that any of her past actions could have or did hurt Cat Noir. Not a single action from keeping him in the dark, demoting him without even a conversation, or the fact that not 30 seconds ago she yelled at him for trying to help her, registers as something that could have hurt her partner. She feels no guilt for this situation. So this is where Plague comes in and gets to help her see her faults, right? Well... Plague is a fun character. He's cute, funny, and has an unhealthy obsession with cheese. He's very likable as a chaotic foil to Adrian's traditionally structured lifestyle. But Plague drops the ball here, and it's mostly because the writers didn't seem to want to push him outside of his comedic side character bubble. He does tell Ladybug that she's been ignoring Cat Noir, but he's so busy describing it through cheese metaphors that Ladybug barely understands what he's trying to say. And even after explaining it, he inevitably agrees that she's just doing her job as Guardian and therefore isn't in the wrong. Because being the Guardian means she can't have an adult conversation about a change in responsibilities with her partner. He's Cat Noir's biggest ally, but even his character falls victim to the idea that Ladybug is infallible and any conflict is really the other person's fault. It's frustrating, to say the least. As the audience, you've probably had a moment where you wanted to tell Ladybug off, let her know that she's hurting her partner, or even just remind her that he's a boy with feelings. But when the moment comes where there might finally be a catharsis, where another character might finally say what the audience has been feeling, he relents. And that's not to say that Ladybug is a huge villain here. I don't want this to come off as disliking the episode because I hate Marinette. I think Marinette is dealing with a lot, and that is being reflected in her actions. But part of growing is making mistakes and accepting that they were mistakes, and when it comes to being the Guardian, Ladybug never omits fault. Even in Ephemeral, an episode where arguably Marinette's inability to handle her Guardian duties causes the episode's problems, the ending conversation with Su Han boils down to Sorry, Ladybug, you are perfect and wiser than I, and nothing I said had any merit. Please forgive me for not seeing your great wisdom, 14-year-old child. It makes for poor storytelling when the series shows us these faults clearly, but never addresses them. Then Plog makes the situation worse when, after she replies that Cat Noir should be happy to have time off, he replies with the worst reason Cat Noir isn't happy because he's in love with Ladybug. Now, I'm not an idiot. Clearly, Cat Noir's affection for the spotted heroine is affecting his view of the entire situation. But by framing this entire problem as a love problem, the writers have left out a lot of nuance that complicates the situation. Or at least it's missing a lot of the nuance that has been shown. This is where the episode splits into two stories, the one that's told to us and the one that's shown to us. The characters in the episode are trying to convince us that this is about Cat Noir's affections causing a rift between them, literally spelling it out to us in an attempt to make us believe this is the blanket cause. It's useless. The problem is that Cat Noir is in love with me, and since I can't do anything about that, I'll keep on breaking his heart over and over again. But the issue with this interpretation is that Cat Noir's been in love with her this entire time, and it hasn't been this big of a problem before. No, the big change shown to us through the character's actions has been Ladybug's dismissal of Cat Noir as a hero. And that's evident in those first 30 seconds. 
See, the problem in those first 30 seconds isn't that she's using other heroes. It's who she's using them against. Giga Titan and Roger Cop are both villains that were taken out easily with just Ladybug and Cat Noir. They know their weaknesses, they know their powers, and they know the location of their Akumas. There is no need to pick other heroes to fight them, and maybe the situation has changed and that requires some help, but she literally has four people use their superpowers to take down a baby. One shield to stop the baby, one hole to get through said shield, one gift to distract the already trapped baby, and one venom to freeze the already trapped baby so that she can break the akumatized object. Four heroes to stop a baby with three serving the same purpose. If this was about picking the best people for the job, then this would be utterly ridiculous. And it should not be preferable to have so many miraculous out of the miracle box versus trusting one cat boy you fought with for months. They are showing us how much effort it apparently takes for Ladybug to replace just one Cat Noir. How much better it is when they work together. But that's not what they're telling us. But let's put that aside for a moment because we are only five minutes into this episode and there is so much more to see. Like their pitiful attempt to make Adrian mopey. I mean, he is. But do they really have to do him like this? 20 seconds of generic sad removal of reminders, accompanied by sad violin interrupted by Ladybug being totally fine when thinking about his replacement. It's the most pathetic I'm sad scene in the whole show, punctuated by the father of the year. You'll feel better by then. He's an aggressed. So now we get to the gimmick of the episode. In order for Ladybug to not know the identity of the new Cat Noir, she gives the miraculous to Plague who, you guessed it, just gives it back to Adrian. But now Adrian has to change his hero personality to become a new cat hero. Catwalker. A hero designed to win Ladybug's affection and never be forgotten again. Now if you're watching my videos, and especially if you subscribe to the channel, you're a smart cookie, and that means you've probably already noticed an issue. If the problem was really the fact that Cat Noir was in love with Ladybug, then why would the solution be a more attractive Cat Noir? Isn't that the opposite of what she wanted? Apparently, the problem was that he's in love with her, so that means every time she doesn't pick him to be on her team, he'll be heartbroken. Making him more Ladybug-approved Cat Noir with the intent to make her want him around more doesn't solve the problem at all, it only exacerbates it. Even if he's used more, she'll try to keep him at arm's length and use other heroes, so he'll still be hurt, he just won't be able to say anything about it. Not to mention, Black never mentions that Catwalker can't be in love with Ladybug, so Adrian will inevitably confess again and so the whole cycle will continue. But Catwalker he becomes and... it's just Adrian being formal Adrian. And... This whole video is just my opinion, but this part is my most opinion-y opinion. I think it reflects very poorly on Ladybug that she falls so easily for Catwalker. I, I get it, he's just like Adrian, her crush, because he is Adrian, her crush, but something about the fact that he's now acting like he does for his father and that makes him more attractive to her just feels wrong. I want to cheer for these two, but when she falls for his act so quickly, these feelings just start to feel so superficial. Like, who Adrian is doesn't matter because anyone who acts formal and looks pretty will do. But either way, they can't talk long because a Senta monster is attacking a building, so it's time to save the day. Only, the Senta monster is conveniently a black cat, so Ladybug assumes it's Cat Noir's former holder, having been akumatized. And I don't entirely blame her, but she starts to act more clumsy than usual, not even considering that it could be a Senta monster until Catwalker makes the cat eat grass. Then she falls for Catwalker even more, stumbles through a lucky charm, ultimately decides she can't use Catwalker, and finds the Akuma on her own. And in the end, Catwalker isn't fit for Ladybug, so Adrian just agrees to stop being Catwalker and the miraculous goes back to Cat Noir. And again, you guys are really smart. So you may have noticed that the stated problem of Cat Noir being in love with Ladybug has still not been resolved. So what are the writers and characters of the episode trying to tell us? Adrian doesn't want to be Cat Noir because he's heartbroken. Ladybug needs to use multiple heroes now in her new role as Guardian. 
Catwalker is too perfect to function as a reliable member of the team. And Ladybug needs Cat Noir, but not as a partner, as a regular team member. But here is what the episode shows us. Adrian doesn't want to be Cat Noir anymore because he feels left out and unneeded. Ladybug needs several other heroes to equal the utility of one Cat Noir. Ladybug cannot function when a moderately serious and charming person is around, and she can defeat this villain on her own. And it's this last discrepancy that really bothers me, because it should be the most important part of making this whole episode work. I get what the writers are trying to do here. The whole, you don't know what you've got till it's gone cliche. But it doesn't work when the person you replaced is actually the person doing the replacing. Catwalker didn't make any mistakes that Cat Noir wouldn't have made, because he is Cat Noir. They didn't work as a team less, because he is Cat Noir. And he doesn't love her any less, because he is Cat Noir. A smoothie doesn't change if you replace purple grape juice with green grape juice, they're both still grape juice. The only reason Catwalker didn't work out is because of Ladybug. She started to get clumsy because of a little crush and that meant she couldn't utilize him in this battle. But that doesn't support this episode's goals, so they claim Catwalker is too perfect. But that's not a thing. You can't be too perfect at something. It just means the other party is too insecure to admit fault. Which brings up two more issues. I know, this rant is like a family tree of problems marrying problems to give birth to even more problems. So many baby problems. The first issue is that Ladybug's initial claims of how she wants to utilize Cat Noir's abilities conflicts with her decision to be rid of Catwalker. The problem with Cat Noir was that he expected to be needed every battle and could not handle being unnecessary. But Catwalker isn't needed in this fight and leaves gracefully after being as helpful as he could be. If he wasn't supposed to be useful for every fight, why is his inability to be useful here enough to disqualify him from being a hero? The second problem is that this decision leads to her wanting Cat Noir back, but nothing in this episode has given her a reason to do so. And that's the biggest problem with this episode. They're trying to tell you that Cat Noir is irreplaceable, but nothing in this episode supports that. Cat Noir does not provide anything different to Catwalker. Cat Noir didn't help take down this villain. Neither the initial problem of his love for Ladybug nor his desire to be more necessary were solved. In the end, the episode proved what it meant to disprove. Cat Noir isn't necessary anymore. If you take any cat user out of this episode, Ladybug still saves the day. And in the end, it culminates into the most bullcrap ending. Cat Noir apologizes. Our victim, the character who was most hurt by this, who was seemingly replaced in a day, has to apologize for feeling left out after spending three seasons of being one of Paris's primary defenders, only to be demoted to the same level as the monkey hero who makes things random, and the pig girl whose power acts like a discount mirror of Erised. And not a single apology is given by Ladybug in this entire episode. Not one. Just a blanket statement that she'll need him even if it's only when Ladybug asks for it. Screw his feelings, right? And heck, Catwalker confirmed it wasn't Ladybug's fault because Guardians don't have to care for their partner's feelings, they have to care for everyone equally, and that means letting them know each other's identities while Cat Noir knows nothing. Because equality, right? Oh, I forgot. This episode is so busy focusing on Cat Noir's love for Ladybug that it forgot every other thing in this character arc. The fact that Cat Noir wasn't allowed to meet Master Fu until the very end? Not mentioned. The fact Alia and Nino both know each other's identities? Doesn't matter. The fact Ladybug has entrusted Cat Noir with any of this information and he had to learn about it secondhand? Not a factor. Every other scene of conflict between Cat Noir and Ladybug is practically erased because they focused only on the love aspect and not on the trust or betrayal aspects. They're back to being friends now and none of that will be resolved except for a slightly more compelling argument in the finale. Like, seriously, their argument in Strike Back is miles better than the arguments in the episode designated as the argument episode. 
It's like they realized after writing Kuro Neko that they forgot five episodes worth of plot had happened and scrambled to address them somewhere before the season ended. And with Ladybug finally showing some remorse and admitting to her faults in the finale, it almost makes me wonder why this episode even existed in the first place. And I guess that's what it feels like. It doesn't feel like this episode was really written to finish this arc, but to be an excuse to make a new cat holder for an episode. It makes up a problem, even though there already is an established one, and it doesn't even address the problem that it created. Instead, just trying to do a blanket lesson to appease the audience. It feels like the writers didn't even know what they were trying to accomplish with writing it. And I feel like that might be why what it shows and what it tells are so different. Thank you so much for listening to this singular episode rant. If you liked the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye bye Hi there, it's the end of the video, my friend. Hit the bell if it was okay, I'm sure I'll make good content someday. I'll play some games or do some drawing Pokemon and fights with darling video essays and reviews. I couldn't do it without you, so thanks. Like and subscribe.